the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent, the Lateri Sunday, the Sunday of rejoicing when we look at the joy of being saved and the joy of expectation that we are not going to end our journey in suffering but in victory with the Lord. In this Mass, we pray for Harold Tompkins. Harold Tompkins was the husband of our sister, Rita Tompkins, from Holy Family in Belmont. So this Mass is for Harold Tompkins, the husband of Rita Tompkins. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was a ruddy young man, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. 
the Lord said to Samuel, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in his hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff, you give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The second reading is from the first letter of is from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no path in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please may we arise for the proclamation of the gospel. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord, Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his face and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. He went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who have seen him earlier as a beggar say, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some say it is, but others say, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on Sabbath. So, the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. 
he said, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the man made to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found the man and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. The man said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning and happy Sunday, everyone. Thank you for being part of this Mass. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent, and it is the Lateris Sunday, the Sunday of Rejoicing. And I'm supposed to be putting on rose, not purple. Forgive me, I do not have the rose vestment here. So I'm wearing the purple color instead of the rose. We put on the rose color because it is the Sunday that calls us to take a little break away from the penitential mood of Lent to celebrate the joy of knowing that we are not doomed sinners. As we go through Lent, we don't go through Lent as helpless sinners. We go through Lent as sinners who are already redeemed and we are journeying in salvation, not in condemnation. Today we take another step in our journey of transformation, our journey of being holy. And today the Lord invites us to recognize our blindness. There is this figure of speech that is called an oxymoron, which is like a contradiction when you say, I can see my blindness. Or when we say the silent scream, the silent scream, that is a figure of speech. When we say, I can see the darkness, or I can see my blindness, that is the message. The church wants us to see our blindness. We are blind in different ways. In the first reading, Samuel was trying to look at people based on their appearances. When he saw a huge, handsome looking, strong, healthy man, he said, oh, that must be the man that the Lord has chosen because he's good looking, he's strong, he's a giant. And then the Lord showed Samuel the blindness of the human person. The Lord said to him, human beings judge by appearance, but God looks at the heart. In the gospel, Jesus heals a man who was born blind. And the healing of this man who was born blind was a contradiction of the Pharisees who were not born blind, but they were blind in the heart. This man was physically blind. The Pharisees were not physically blind. They were spiritually blind. They were blind in the heart. They could not see the love of God. They could not see the image of God in this man because he was blind. Jesus saw the image of God in this man and he decided to heal this man who was suffering from blindness right from birth. And when Jesus healed this man, the Pharisees who were blind in their heart, they became angry. 
and they threw the man out. The Pharisees, like Samuel, represent every one of us. We human beings, we tend to be blind in the heart, even though our eyes are open. We look at things from our own blind spots. We look at people from our own pride. We look at people from our own greed and our own biases. We judge people from our ego and our selfishness. We are too blind to see in other people the image of God that they are. We are too blind to see in other people the love and the beauty of God. And Jesus comes to heal us of our spiritual blindness. He comes to heal us of the things in us that make us not to see the way God sees. As we journey through Lent, God wants us to see the strategies of the devil, the temptations of the devil that lead us to sin. God wants to heal our blindness so that we can see those deceptions of Satan. He wants us to see the devices, the snares of the devil that leads us to sin. When God heals our blindness, we are able to see the traps that the devil sets on our path. When God heals us of our blindness, we are able to see the habits in us, those bad behaviors in us, those attitudes in us that make us not to show the love of God to other people. God opens our eyes and we are able to see in ourselves the things that prevent us from being honest and loving children of God. We are invited to open our hearts so that Jesus can show us the way. And when we see the way of Jesus, we can see the way God sees. Christ is our light. He is the light who sends away darkness from our hearts. He is the light who shows us the path to follow to heaven. And at this time, when we are battling with the pandemic of the coronavirus, we may be blind to the love of God, and we may be negative. We may be so afraid that we are blind to the provision of God, what we call divine providence. And so I invite you this morning to not be blinded by the coronavirus. Do not let the fear of the virus make you blind to the good things that are in the world. The fact that you can be watching this mass and be part of it is a sign of the good things in the world. Coronavirus has separated us from each other, but technology is bringing us together and we can see this live mass and we are participating live in the celebration of the Eucharist. That is something good that we should look at. The people who have died, they are less than the number of those who are alive. The fact that the whole world has not perished, that is something good that we should look at. Instead of being blinded by the fear of the pandemic, let us look at the bright side of life. And you know what? This is not going to last. I am not a scientist. I am not a researcher. I am not a medical doctor. But I know in faith that this is not going to last. This is not going to end the world. God is going to give us a solution. This is going to end sooner than we think. Things are going to be better than we expect them to be. The light of Christ is going to dispel the darkness of the coronavirus. I want you to open your hearts to the love of God. I want you to open your heart to the power of God. God's power is bigger than the virus. At the end of it all, the glory of God shall prevail. My dear friends, Christ is the light who dispels the darkness of sin from our hearts. He is also the light who will dispel the pandemic called coronavirus. May God heal us of blindness 
and give us the light of love. Amen. May we arise and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My dear friends, we will bow on our heads in prayer. We pray for the leaders of the church, that God may open their eyes to see the best way to lead us to the path of righteousness and salvation. For the leaders of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for leaders of governments, that the light of Christ will illumine their hearts and show them the right things to do to protect their countries and the whole world and to show us the way out of the darkness that shrouds the world, particularly the darkness of the virus that we are all afraid of. For the leaders of governments, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves that the Holy Spirit will show us the path of righteousness, that God may dispel the darkness of sin from our lives and lead us to the path of the light of God that leads us to heaven. For ourselves and our journey of salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Harold Tompkins, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all the faithful departed in all our Catholic communities of southeastern Allegheny County and all over the world, that the Lord may grant them eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, particularly those who are sick with the coronavirus, that the Lord will grant them speedy recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, may we now offer our own intentions to God. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for the gift of this fourth Sunday of Lent. Thank you for giving us yet another day and another week. May you help us, O Lord, as we struggle through this dark moment in our lives. And we pray that the light that you are may dispel the darkness of our lives and the darkness of this disease. May you guide us in the Diocese of Buffalo as we await your appointment of a new bishop for us. May you continue to guide us all those who lead us right now, and may you show us the path of salvation. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With a humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight on this day 
be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash may be accepted. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim Worship together in exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, 
we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days so that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please send to the world and to one another the peace of Christ, who is our light. Peace be with you, folks. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the mingling of the body and blood of Christ bring salvation to us who receive them. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My dear friends, because of distance barrier, you are not able to receive communion. Please maintain some silence and offer a prayer to God for the salvation of the world and deliverance from the pandemic of the coronavirus. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, so that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please bow down your heads and receive the blessing for the fourth week of Lent. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. 
May the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you, both now and forever. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us now go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you for your presence and participation. From Monday to Friday, if this situation continues, we continue to have Mass here by 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Monday to Friday. There is no Mass on Saturday. And then on Sunday, there will be Mass by 10 a.m. Continue to keep yourself safe and be prayerful on behalf of the world. Have a wonderful week, everyone. We will now pray the prayer of protection. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the reign of souls. Amen.